So uh, I'll present a study into math document classification using deep learning. My presentation today is divided into these main sections. First, I'm going to share with you our motivation for this study. Then I would like to present our model with some details. Uh, after that, I will talk about the data set that we have used to train our model. Uh, then I will present our experiments results. Uh, finally, I will conclude my, uh, my presentation to have uh, plenty of time for your questions at the end. So let's get started. I believe that we all have uh, noticed that recently the number of scientific publications uh, and uh, studies are, uh, is growing exponentially recently. So uh, this caused an increasing in the number of online libraries too, such as Open Library, Archive, and uh, many other uh, online libraries. These libraries need to, uh, these libraries need to classify each new document in a specific domain. And to do so, they have to go through the, uh, the whole content of the doc, usually they have to go to the uh, whole content of the document in order to um, uh, classify it correctly. So the end user will get the, uh, the right result. If you search for something, he will get the right results uh, at the end. And uh, uh, we know that this process is expensive in terms of cost and uh, time because usually these libraries need, sometimes they need for a human uh, annotator to annotate these documents. So the demand for uh, an online or an, uh, an uh, automated uh, classification system uh, increasing too. Um, so, um, for this reason, there are many uh, studies in uh, natural language processing that uh, focused on the uh, math uh, in, uh, on uh, uh, document classification in general. And uh, our focus here is uh, a, a, is on a mathematic document classification. So we are focusing on a specific domain, which is mathematic. So what's the further mathematic document from uh, any other documents? If you look at any uh, mathematic document, uh, it's clearly that the math, uh, math, uh, mathematic document uh, doesn't include only text. It includes uh, a combination of text with math formulas, uh, expressions, and uh, equations. So that's what leads us to uh, ask the following questions. Whether uh, math document classification performance is impacted by these math expressions and samples, either alone or in conjunction with the text content of documents? So the main goal uh, here for this study is to answer this question. So we have to investigate each case using a deep learning model. I mean, each case that we want to uh, train the model with text only and then train it again with text, uh, with combination, uh, a combination of text and math that included in that document. Uh, we also tried to uh, train the model using math only from the document. We didn't include any of the text. So we wanted to investigate all the three, uh, three cases uh, to know how these uh, math uh, formulas and expression will impact the, uh, the performance of the R classifier. And the second question is, uh, and for, for, for the first question, we had to build a model. So we, just, we didn't just uh, build a model, we wanted also to uh, investigate another, uh, another point, which is uh, trying a mini key design parameters for our model. So we already uh, have uh, three different uh, uh, input representation. And we also wanted to uh, investigate key design parameters for our model, and we trained our mo we uh, trained our model with several input representation and different set of key design parameters and decision key. So we wanted to find the best among this uh, collection of parameters. So, uh, what's our model? Which model did we uh, use for this study? 
this slide shows the uh, the architecture of our model. Uh, it's very simple. It has four uh, four uh, layers, uh, starting with the embedding layer, then uh, one dimensional uh, convolutional network layer, uh, LSTM layer, and end up with the classifier layer, which uh, we which we use here, uh, softmax. In the input feature. Uh, so at the model start with feeding uh, the uh, feeding the embedding layer with the uh, input features, and here the input features we have three different uh, features. So for each document in our data set, we for each document we produced three different formats. So the first format will be text only from that document. The second format will be math only from that document. And the third one is text and math from that document. We feed them to the embedding layer. And uh, before that, uh, we also, this is another parameter that we've tried. We tried to uh, take the first uh, 1000 tokens from each document then we increased that length. We tried to uh, read the uh, 1500, first 1500 tokens. After that, we tried to add that more and uh, we read the uh, 2000 uh, first tokens and we, um, uh, uh, we will present all the, uh, I will present all the uh, uh, results for these experiments at the end. So these parameters uh, that we uh, tried for the input features. For the embedding layer, uh, we also have different parameters for this layer. We tried different embedding dimension, 100 dimension, 200 dimension, and 300 dimension. So we wanted to know which one is the best for our model. Also, we tried different embedding type, right, uh, which are uh, random initialization, we start training the model using random initialization. And also we try to train, uh, we try, uh, trained our model using uh, a pre-trained glob uh, embedding. Then uh, after we feeding the model with the input feature and uh, uh, apply the embedding layer, uh, the result will go to the, uh, the output will go to the uh, convolutional and uh, uh, to the convolutional uh, neural network layer, which will um, uh, reduce the number of features and passes only the, uh, um, the valuable features to the next layer, which is LSTM layer here. And uh, we will end up with the softmax layer, which is responsible of uh, determining the, uh, the right, uh, the right uh, class for each document, the right subject or area, the math area for each document. And to build this model, we uh, use the KeyRAS with TensorFlow as uh, the backend framework. Um, and uh, uh, now our model is ready and we need uh, to train it and test it. And for this, uh, we have to have a data set uh, and we looked for a data set that works the best for uh, our uh, goal here. Are uh, we looking for a data set that contains uh, mathematic document. So fortunately, we have uh, uh, we uh, could obtain a data set called the HTML file data set. It's a large scale data set consists of a large number of uh, scientific documents. So it's include uh, many areas, uh, not only math. So we retrieved um, a subset of this uh, data set. Uh, only a document that labeled with um, a math uh, as, as um, a first label. Uh, and this table showed uh, the number of documents in each math area in this data set. And in, we end up with uh, uh, 170, about 170,000 uh, files. And uh, we, uh, we have to uh, prepare the data in order to use it. So, in the preparation uh, stage, uh, to make the picture clear, uh, I will give an example from the data set. So the first box shows the, uh, the content of uh, one of the files, uh, of a portion of the file. Uh, so, and the first box uh, shows the content when we use text and math. 
So we include both text and math definition in that file. But in the text only, as you see in the next box, uh, we removed all the math from uh, the file and we kept only text. Uh, for, uh, and the last box shows uh, the math only feature uh, where we uh, exclude all text and kept only the math. And uh, uh, these are uh, our features that we fed to the model, as I said before. And for each uh, set uh, of the feature, we had to do some pre-processing. So the uh, text only, uh, we had to do some uh, normalization. It's uh, usually most of the uh, natural language uh, processing tasks need some pre-processing. So uh, we include uh, a lot of uh, pre-processing and here is uh, some examples of uh, some examples. Uh, we did normalization, for example, we uh, uh, replace any punctuation in the text with the keyword uh, PUN and numbers with the uh, num and so on. And also we use the NLTK toolkits uh, to uh, remove all stop words. And for the feature uh, math only, uh, we had to use uh, special toolkits. It's uh, like a uh, library that has a uh, math algorithm, algorithm that help us to tokenize uh, the equations and expressions. Uh, because uh, as you know, the, uh, the math, we, can, we can't handle the math the same way that we handle the text. So we had to use uh, special toolkits to uh, tokenize the math and uh, to uh, keep the case sensitivity of the tokens since we deal with uh, equations where capital R, it's not the same as uh, lower R, for example. And in the text and math feature, uh, we applied a combination of both uh, pre-processing as needed. And uh, after we finished all the pre-processing, we had to uh, divide the uh, data set in uh, randomly into 80-20% for training and testing. And uh, after we train and test our model, uh, I will present our experiment for all setups that I have mentioned before. Uh, here is uh, the uh, first uh, result. Uh, the table shows the results for uh, the uh, 100 uh, uh, embedding dimension. So here, uh, all the results you can see here in this slide, it's for 100 embedding dimension. Uh, for all input length, as I said before, when we tried the one, uh, first 1,000, first uh, 1,500, and uh, the first 2,000 of each document, uh, as you see in the left uh, column, and uh, the three last columns shows the uh, different features, uh, different input representation, text uh, math, uh, text only, and math only. And uh, in terms of the result, the best result we get here for this embedding dimension is, uh, uh, was be, uh, be reduced by the text only feature. So the text only was the best among all the input length using all model, all kind of uh, embedding, uh, all kind of uh, embedding uh, that we've used like random initialization and uh, glob, detailed glob, whether it's uh, uh, fine tuned or not. So, uh, and, and all of uh, the three uh, input lengths, uh, the best was text only. However, uh, the best uh, result or the highest result was produced when we used the largest number uh, of tokens from the file. So when we read the first 2000, as you see here, uh, in the last uh, row when I highlighted with red, it's uh, the highest result uh, for the 100 embedding dimension. For the 200 embedding dimension, the same phenomena. We had the same phenomena, uh, which is uh, text only was the best. Uh, we had the same exact result, almost exact result. Uh, the uh, the uh, only the difference was uh, in 2000, um, uh, the first tokens, um, the, uh, the uh, embedding was the uh, using the brief uh, glove without tune. But the, the difference was really a slight different. So we can say that 100 dimension, 200 dimension has the same uh, result. 
for the last embedding dimension, um, fortunately, we had um, a good chance to try another uh, another uh, uh, pre-trained glove. The data set that we have used it comes along with the pre-trained glove. Uh, this block was uh, trained. Uh, this embedding was trained on uh, the whole data set, so it's pre-trained pre on not only uh, math data but on a scientific data. And uh, fortunately, the the highest result we got is uh, by using this uh, this set of embedding. As you see, when we use the two thousand uh, uh, two thousand input length. And uh, that uh, lead us to know uh, to uh, um, to uh, say that uh, using a pre-trained blob on larger data set that we uh, used for uh, training and testing the model uh, will give a better result. And uh, to conclude, the um, the uh, the different set of results, we can say that uh, among all the uh, setups that we have, uh, the text only was the best uh, input representation for mathematic documents. And adding math uh, expressions or uh, symbols and uh, equations and math terms in general didn't help the, uh, the, um, the model uh, to uh, to improve the accuracy, let's say the, to improve the accuracy. So here we had to explain why, because we uh, we expected that adding math, at least adding math to the text, will help the uh, the uh, performance of the classifier. But that didn't happen here. So what's the explanation? And our we had to explain why text only was the, was better than using math only or using math in conjunction with the text. So usually the math symbols are quite abstract and generic. So uh, for example, our X in algebra, it's, it doesn't have any meaning. It's the same X if we use it in a different area of math. So mostly they are independent of underlying math area or the subject class itself. On the other hand, the text carry more field specific semantic and thus has more uh, differentiating power for the classifier. This would explain why the text feature are better than uh, math features. So now why, um, why the uh, text and math because we expect that text and math should be no worse than text alone. Again, for the same reason, since math token uh, don't carry any semantic that will help the classifier to distinguish the math area, uh, they act as a space filling, which we called in natural language processing noise. So uh, when we took, for example, the first 2000 tokens from the file, if it happened and include, uh, it includes some math, so we added more noise to the, uh, uh, the input for the classifier. So when we took the, uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, whatever the size is, 1,000 or 2,000 and uh, 1,500 tokens, we, uh, including the math, we didn't help the classifier. Uh, the, the opposite. What happens is the opposite. So uh, we include uh, useless math terms, which are fewer meaningful features and lead to uh, less classification accuracy. And in terms of the uh, best model based on the uh, dimension or input length, uh, we end up with uh, saying that the result of uh, testing the impact of these uh, parameters showed that increasing both factors impact the performance positively. So uh, the higher dimension we use, the higher accuracy we got. And the higher uh, input length we use, uh, uh, we got higher uh, accuracy. And for future work, we would like to uh, use different models. As I said, the model wasn't 
too complicated because our main goal here is to uh, find out uh, the impact of the features, not to find a sophisticated model. So we would like to uh, um, try another model. And also we would like to, uh, um, once I said, uh, the, um, using pre-trained GLOB on a global data give us the best result among all the experiments that we did. So we would like to uh, investigate the embedding such as ELMO and PERT, uh, which are uh, more contextualized embedding. Uh, we believe that it could uh, um, produce good results. So maybe we will investigate it in our future work. And that's it 